everyone. Welcome to the Granite Bay Hilltop Church Sabbath School. Today we are going to be continuing our study in the quarterly on Mark, and we are in lesson number eight, Teaching Disciples, part two. But before we get to that, I want to point you to the free offering that we have to go with our study today. It is a pocketbook titled Remember Lot's Wife. And you can get this pocketbook by calling the number 866-788-3966 and asking for offer number 108. If you're in the United States, you can also text the code SH054 to the number 40544. And if you're outside the United States, you can go on your computer and type in the URL study dot aftv dot org forward slash sh054 well in our previous studies uh, we have been uh, seeing how mark has emphasized the the special consideration that jesus gave in his preaching and his teaching to his disciples about the kingdom of god but now today as we look at Mark chapter 10, uh, we're going to see that, that Jesus is going to note the impact of the kingdom of God on the hearts of his people who have accepted its principles and allowed the word of God to transform their lives. Mark also shares how we can experience the kingdom of God now here on this earth while we are waiting for its physical manifestation in the end of time. And so our study today is going to focus on one major question. And that question is, how can we enter the kingdom of God? We're also going to look at some of the challenges that God's people face as we're trying to enter into His kingdom. And we're going to look at three points in our study today. Number one, we're going to see how Mark illustrates that those who want to enter into God's kingdom, uh, they must pos uh, possess the natural attitude of little children. Uh, little children uh, are very trusting. They, they just believe what you tell them to. And he says we have to enter like a little child. And then number two, we're going to look at how God invites every one of us to be a part of his kingdom. And then third, in order to experience the kingdom now, there is a major precept uh, or a principle that we need to keep in mind. In, in Mark chapter 10, Mark ponders two very basic questions when it comes to the kingdom of God. The first one we find in Mark chapter 10 verse 17 where this rich young man comes to Jesus and says, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And then in Mark chapter 10 verse 26, uh, the disciples say to Jesus, who then can be saved? Those, those are great questions, aren't they? Those are questions that we may have asked ourselves or, or maybe that we want to know the answer to ourselves. What do I need to do to enter the kingdom of God and, and who can be saved? And essentially, both of these questions express the same idea about who can enter into God's kingdom and at the same time affirm the importance that Jesus gave to being a part of his kingdom. I want you to notice Mark chapter 10 verse 15. Jesus says, Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter into it. Here we see that Jesus is telling us that whoever is desiring to enter into his kingdom, if they don't believe and they don't have the implicit trust and faith of a little child, they can't be a part of his kingdom. Now, family, I would be willing to bet 
that every parent who is listening to the sound of my voice would agree with this statement. When you give a little child a gift, they don't stand there and say, well, what do I need to do to receive this gift? They don't do that, right? They just simply, oh, for me? And they, they accept it, they take it, they receive it, right? Uh, a child just simply reaches out their hands to accept the gift that they are being offered. I don't know about you, but whenever I study the Word of God, if I want to get into depth in a subject, I'll always go back to the original language. If you're looking at something in the Old Testament, you, you go back to the Hebrew. If you're looking for something in the New, you go to the Greek. And it's interesting that if you go uh, to a, a Greek lexicon, I, 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 I love the age that we live in. Um, I don't know Hebrew and Greek, but there's so many people that do, and there's so much that's written. You can just go and Google it. You can go online. You can go to a computer. You can go uh, to a book, uh, go to a Greek lexicon. And, and when you do and you look in the original Greek language, that word that is used, that is translated in Mark chapter 10, verse 15, that verse that we just read, uh, where it says that you have to receive it, uh, that word in the English is receive, but that comes from the Greek word dakamai. And that means simply to receive, to take hold of something, to readily receive information and regard it as true, to receive readily, to accept or believe, to accept the presence of a person with friendliness or to welcome. In other words, in order to enter into the kingdom of God, we must believe in the kingdom. We must welcome the kingdom and we must take hold of the kingdom. All with the enthusiasm, the trust, the faith, the belief of a little child. Let me say it another way. When we are entering into the kingdom of God, we must accept the good news about the kingdom. We must believe the good news and we must make it our own. Now, friends, I want you to imagine for a moment that I give you a gift. And that gift is wrapped in beautiful paper, and it has ribbons and bows, and it has your name on it. And you take that gift, and you take it home, and you set it on your kitchen table, and every day you walk by and you look and you go, oh yeah, there's that gift from Pastor Rod. But you never open it. Brothers and sisters, that gift is of no value to you. It might have exactly the thing that you've been looking for the, 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 and hoping for and praying for, but if you don't open it, if you don't receive it, if you don't accept it and, and make it your own, it's of no value to you. And that's the same, that's true with the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ died for everyone, but not everyone will be saved because they don't accept the gift. They don't receive it and make it their own and ask Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior. The second thing that we saw in our study this week is that Jesus invites everyone what word did I use? Everyone. Jesus invites us all to be a part of his kingdom. Uh, family, that totally does away with the idea that many people have that there are some people who are predestined to be lost and there are some who are predestined to be uh, saved. Jesus invites everyone. He says he doesn't want anyone to perish. 
And so he is inviting us to be a part of his kingdom. And I want you to notice in Mark chapter 10, right after Jesus blesses the children in verses 13 through 16, you have this story about this rich young man who comes to Jesus and asks him what he needs to do. Notice in Mark chapter 10, verse 17. It says, Now as he, that is Jesus, was going out on the road, one, that is the rich young man, came running, knelt before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? I want you to notice here that this question that this young man asks Jesus has two ideas in it that are connected together. The first is he wants to know what he needs to do in, to inherit eternal life. And in that statement, he's essentially saying, what do I need to do to enter into the kingdom of God? And so those ideas are connected together in that statement. And in the passage that follows, I, I want you to notice that Jesus presents two impediments that may prevent us or hinder us from entering into and experiencing the kingdom of God. And from Jesus' response, we should be able to see that entering into God's kingdom is not complicated. I don't know about you, but I love that about God. God doesn't make it hard for us to enter into his kingdom. He doesn't make it so that only the really, 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 really smart people can get there. But even a simple child can understand the truths and, and enter into his kingdom. And yet, at the same time, while it is not complicated... At the same time, we must be aware of the challenges that can ensnare us and pull us away from his kingdom. And the first impediment that Jesus talks about uh, involves our material possessions. And, uh, and then the second one, after reading this story of the rich young man, we should be able to see that the heirs of the kingdom of God have a, 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 a great knowledge of and a commitment to the law of God and an understanding of the scriptures overall. And so two things that can hinder us our material possessions, or number two, uh, a majority of the Christian world today teaches that you don't have to keep the commandments of God. But that is not biblical. And so uh, those are two impediments that can keep us from entering into the kingdom of God. We need to understand that God loves everyone. But there is a special place in his heart for those who keep his commandments, for those who love him enough to allow him to transform their lives. And yet at the same time, we see that obedience to the law of God is not enough to ensure that we will get into the kingdom. I want you to notice what Jesus says in Mark chapter 10, verse 21 and 22. It says, then Jesus, looking at him, that's the rich young ruler, loved him and said to him, one thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come take up the cross and follow me. But he was sad at this word and went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. Uh, what, what we need to understand here is that when this young man came to Jesus and he said, what must I do? Jesus told him, keep the commandments of God. And then he listed for him uh, those commandments that are on the, the second uh, tablet of the Ten Commandments in stone. He talks about 
those commandments that have to do with our relationship with others. Don't steal, don't murder, uh, honor your mother and father, don't covet. Uh, and the young man says, I have done all of these things since my youth. And, and that's where Jesus says this, and he really challenges this young man's thinking. Because uh, he was keeping those last six commandments, but he was really having trouble with the first four that essentially tell us to put God first. And in reality, this young man had put his material possessions first and, and, and put them before God. And I imagine, just to be fair with this young man, I, I would imagine that there were a lot of people in those days that conceptualized the kingdom of God in earthly terms. Uh, in terms of, of wealth and power. Those were the two main components. And they would look at that and they would say, wow, this guy is rich. God is with him. God is blessing him, right? And uh, you could say that this rich young man was already a part of a great kingdom, a kingdom of riches and of great wealth. But his problem was that he wasn't willing to detach himself from the earthly kingdom in order to take hold of God's kingdom. And the issue in this narrative is not the morality of wealth. Uh, there are some people that can handle wealth very well. Abraham was a very rich man. Job was a very rich man, but they didn't put their riches ahead of the kingdom of God. And that's why God had to say to this young man, go sell everything you have and then come follow me. In, in fact, Jesus was inviting this young man to be a disciple. But it says that he went away sorrowful because he had great possessions. He, he put his earthly treasures ahead of uh, what God was offering. And it may be argued uh, that he didn't believe that the kingdom of God could give him the better life that he was looking for. It got in the way. Notice uh, going on to verse 29 and 30. And so Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. Family, it is very unfortunate but there are many people today, maybe even among us, who are building up great empires here on this earth which are preventing us from seeing the relevance of God's kingdom and of eternity. The important issue here is that the kingdom of God must be elevated in the human heart above allegiance over your life and uh, over every earthly possession. And that's why the book of Mark, we see Mark emphasizing God's lordship over our life. Because think about this for a minute. If God uh, is ruling and reigning over your life, then he'll be ruling and reigning over your possessions as well. And if that doesn't happen, then we have removed ourselves from the kingdom of God. The third thing that we should be able to see uh, from our study this week is in order to see the kingdom of God, there are certain principles that we need to keep in mind. And let's take a look at one of them, and that is how do we relate to one another? That's a great question, right? Because if, if God is on the throne of our heart, 
uh, we should be treating others differently. I want you to notice Mark chapter 10, verse 31. Jesus says, But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. I want you to notice that this statement is directly connected to the previous discussion about possessions. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. In other words, entry into the kingdom of God is not based on human hierarchy. Let me see if I can illustrate this point for a moment. In, in this account that we see in Mark chapter 10, Jesus and his disciples were on their way to Jerusalem. And in the heart and the mind of the disciples, they were expecting that when they got to Jerusalem, that Jesus was going to set up his earthly kingdom. And so two of the disciples come to him with an appeal. Notice in Mark chapter 10, verse 37, James and John, they come to him and they said to him, grant us that we may sit one on your right hand and the other on your left in your glory. I want you to notice what they don't say. They don't say, Lord, what must we do to enter into your kingdom? They don't say, Lord, can we be a part of your kingdom? But rather, they are lobbying for prime positions in the kingdom. And therefore, Jesus explains that those who endeavor to enter into his kingdom, uh, they will receive blessings, but he points out something else uh, that's just as important. Notice in Mark chapter 10, verse 38 through 40. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink and be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? And they said to him, We are able. In other words, what Jesus is saying is that when we're entering into the kingdom of God, there's going to be blessings of God. Uh, but there's also going to be suffering. Jesus was about to go to the cross and lay down his life. And he says, are you willing to do that as well? And they say, oh yeah, we're able. But then Jesus says to them, you will indeed drink the cup that I drink. And with the baptism that I am baptized with, you will be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it is prepared. And then Jesus is going to start to explain that those who are striving to enter into the kingdom of God, into excellence, that that should be conducted, that they, that they should be uh, operating in their life in a different way than the rest of the world. Notice in verse 42 through 45, But Jesus called them to himself and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you. But whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever of you desires to be first shall be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. If I could just simplify that and put that into the words, it would simply be this. Citizenship in God's kingdom implies a life of sacrifice and service rather than a life of dominion over others. Family, in this world, it's the opposite of that. You, you got to fight and you got to claw and you got to kick and you got to work your way to the top. But if you want to be great in the kingdom of God, he's saying 
You need to be the servant of all. And Jesus was the greatest example that we have, and we should be striving to emulate him. Family, is that the desire of your heart? To emulate Jesus? To be like him? Do you want to enter into his kingdom? Is that your desire? If it is, we've learned three things in our study this week. Mark illustrates that those who want to enter God's kingdom must come in as like a little child with a trust and a faith. Uh, Number two, God invites everyone to be a part of his kingdom. And number three, in order to experience the kingdom of God now, we must be changed by the word of God and we must have a, a love for God and for others unlike any other in the world. But we are out of time, so let's close now with a word of prayer. O oh, loving Father, Lord, you're so good, and you make it so simple for us to be a part of your family. You're inviting all of us, and you're telling us to come in the simplicity and the faith of a child and allow your word to transform our lives so that we can become your disciples and that we can go out and share that message with everyone around us so that we can bring them that truth and we can bring them uh, your desire that all would be saved. Father, we often fall short of your desire for us. Forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us and wash us as white as snow. And Lord, use us for the furthering of your kingdom and the hastening of the day when Jesus will come and call us home and we will have the physical manifestation of your kingdom. And we pray and ask for it all in Jesus' name. God bless you all and have a great week. Don't forget to request today's life-changing free resource. Not only can you receive this free gift in the mail, you can download a digital copy straight to your computer or mobile device. To get your digital copy of today's free gift, simply text the keyword on your screen to 40544 or visit the web address shown on your screen. And be sure to select the digital download option on the request page. It's now easier than ever for you to study God's Word with amazing facts wherever and whenever you want and most important, to share it with others.